The truth is that Zeta has been growing its proprietary data all through the last number of years. So even as ecosystem regulations have gotten more strict, our model that focuses on people-based data has continued to grow, as is our publisher footprint. Zeta Identity Data comes from a variety of places. We have an expansive publisher network. We also have built up our own proprietary email database that has 100% opted in permission. So between the two of those assets, it creates a very powerful combination for identity in the marketing ecosystem. There's no chasm between the subjects of data and privacy. They've become one and the same. At Zeta, we've invested time, resources, and dedicated people to the regulatory and legislative environment to understand the changes that are coming. Uh, we've tried to become part of the solution. We work really closely with our partners out there that are also part of the solution to make sure that we have technology that's anticipating the changes that we're seeing in the short term, midterm, and long term. We feel at Zeta that we've created an identity graph that's going to be able to accommodate the system as it morphs into a new privacy forward environment with the ultimate goal of providing consumers with great experiences while ensuring that they feel like their data is safe and trusted by the brands they're interacting with. Zeta owns and operates a publisher network called Discuss, and we also have a number of proprietary microsites that power thousands of newsletters to millions of people that get deployed every month. And through this, we're able to have touch points with about 225 million consumers in the US on a monthly basis. Zeta's identity graph was not built on the backbone of a third party cookie. It's built on actual PII, so first name, last name, and postal addresses with permission. On those individuals, we've attached identifiers to find them in the open web, but we resolve everything really back to a Zeta persistent ID, which does not rely on a third-party cookie. We actually feel that this is a massive opportunity for Zeta, as others continue to have issues with the future of a cookie-less world. We're having customers and prospects come to us regularly, asking for help with preparing for a cookie-less world and a post-IDFA world. Zeta is prepared for this now. Zeta has proprietary data on 225 million Americans in our graph. On those individuals, we are connecting billions of signals every month to detect interest and intent. When a customer joins the Zeta platform, they're essentially getting access to enrich their data with our data. It's a one directional enrichment. We take our understanding of interest and intent and we layer it on top of their understanding of their customers to unlock as most value as possible. Uh, the size of the data and the model in which we can connect identities into marketing activation gives a significant advantage in market. At Zeta, we have two different types of data, customer data and we have Zeta data. We will only enrich customer data. We would never put customer data into the data cloud. That keeps them very separate. The impact of that is that we understand consumers in a way that no other mar marketing cloud or MarTech stack can. Through unique insights, we're able to have better activation strategies and find smaller segments that match to a brand's needs. Those bubble up to the top as opportunities, like we've discussed all day today. No, Zeta customers can access Zeta opportunities and insights so long as they're using the platform. If they leave, they can't take any of that with them. And the beautiful part of that is, the more they use the platform, the stickier it gets and the more embedded it gets into their organization. Signals are coming to us every second of every day. So it's virtually a real-time streaming service that allows us to take signals that are, we find online and attach them directly back to identities. You may have an intent tomorrow that you didn't have today because we've detected new things about you in that period of time and attached it back to you as an identity. Zeta's opt-in identities are continuously refreshed. Uh, we want to maintain the most accurate, stable graph 
And so through all of our digital touch points, we're always seeking to get new consent from users. And again, we want to refresh the entire 225 million Americans uh, every few months. And that's what we do currently. We share data with clients off of something we call a Zeta ID or a Zeta Persistent ID. So when we match to a client, we're really matching on this Zeta identifier. We're not sharing direct PII with the client. They're reliant on us to actually continue that enrichment through the notion of persisting that ID through the enrichment that takes place between our data and their data. Zeta does not sell or license its data. The goal of that is to make sure that we keep it inside our ecosystem and we continue to learn from our data. Derivative learnings make the data more powerful, uh, makes it uh, tuned for a brand's specific needs so that we're getting the best outcomes downstream. If we were to push data outside of our pipes, we wouldn't have the same incentive model. We'd be incentivized for a lot of data, not very powerful data. You'll see an emerging trend as people talk about data to make big data small. And what they mean by that is take all of your observations and consolidate them into the most impactful learnings you can. Zeta does not sell or license its data. You have to actually use our platform and the platform technologies to get access to that data. We think that strategically, it's way more advantageous for us to keep things together, the application layer and the infrastructure layer, and to not disintermediate data from platform. This also keeps our customers' data totally private to help the consumer. The Zeta ID graph is built around the concept of a real person that's assigned a proprietary Zeta ID, which includes a name, a postal address, and one-to-many email addresses and digital identifiers. We do not use third-party cookies to identify people, and we have never used Apple's IDFA. Thank you so much for these questions. These are the kinds of conversations we have every day with our customers, with industry analysts, with investors, and amongst ourselves. A lot of these ideas are growing and evolving, and we take a lot of pride of being part of the conversation at the onset and working with our customers to evolve answers and get smarter about what's happening in this industry. Okay.